We are here at Nopo Nanotechnologies in Electronic City, Bengaluru. Nopo, which jokingly stands for not possible, actually manufactures single wall carbon nanotubes. These are some of the strongest materials ever known to humans and they are going to find a wide variety of very promising applications in the immediate future. Nopo is one of the handful of companies that manufacture single walled carbon nanotubes in the world and is in fact the only company in India to do so at the scale at which they do it. They manufacture carbon nanotubes at a diameter of 0.8 nanometers which no other company does at the moment. They also manufacture the product at a scalable quantity. Let's have a look inside and speak with the people here. We are here with Gadadar Reddy, the co-founder and CEO of Nopo Nanotechnologies. Thank you so much for having us, Gadadar. Thank you so Can much. you please tell us about Nopo and about single wall carbon nanotubes? Sure. Thanks a lot. So, uh, Nopo, we started the company with the goal of trying to get people to space, for us all of us to be able to travel there. And we found that the fundamental problem that's led only 500 people to go to space is that it comes down to materials. We need something that's very strong, very light and something that's designed specifically for space. And this is the journey that led us towards the strongest material known to mankind called a carbon nanotube. Now, carbon nanotubes are very tiny tubes made of carbon. They're about one lakh times smaller than a hair strand. And the tubes are just big enough to hold one molecule of water. Mm -hmm. And so these tubes also exhibit tremendous amount of strength. They're about 100 times stronger than steel is, while being about 10 times lighter. So this is the material we have been pursuing since the last 11 years and bringing it to reality. Yes, the thickness of these tubes is just a single atom of carbon thick. The diameter of these tubes is generally about 6 to 10 hydrogen atoms, at least the ones that we specialize in. And can you tell us about uh, what are some potential applications that carbon nanotubes could have, say, 10 to 15 years in the future and also immediately? Sure. So nanotubes, they disrupt quite a few sectors because they have, uh, this, it's one material that exhibits a lot of properties and it excels in all of these properties. So we fondly call it the Rajnikanth of materials mm -hmm. for that reason. So what it can do is when it comes to strength, it's stronger than anything we know of today. So that will potentially lead to sp safer spacecraft, automobiles that are much lighter, drones that carry us everywhere and are being much safer than today. And the next area is when it comes to its uh, electronic properties. So these actually exhibit semiconducting properties, which means they could potentially replace silicon in our electronics and lead to electronics that are significantly better than what we have today. Right. So you're looking at electronics that are 100 times faster and chips that do not heat up anymore. Right. And so these are just two properties. So and every time you burn something, you're actually producing tiny amounts of nanotubes. And water is another major area where we are actively working on right now where the water filtration uh, is something where the nanotubes excel in. They can filter out uh, any contaminant and produce a clean stream of water. And so this has applications in wastewater treatment and in desalination mm. in a very big way. Now, um, although you manufacture carbon nanotubes here, these are not synthetic substances, right? They're very much natural and they're also not plastic. Can you tell us a little bit about the structure of carbon nanotubes? Would it be accurate to say they are an allotrope of carbon? Yes, so they are an allotrope of carbon. In fact, nature does produce nanotubes and fullerenes in very tiny quantities. Anything that burns carbon actually produces nanotubes and fullerenes. Mm -hmm. So, and every time you burn something, you're actually producing tiny amounts of nanotubes. And post that, uh, what we do here is uh, we produce those nanotubes instead of uh, you know, trying to concentrate from natural sources which do not yield the exact same type of nanotubes again and again. Mm. To be able to industrialize that, we need something that's very repeatable. So we in fact break down carbon atoms and assemble them in the form of a tube in our reactors that we have developed here. So we started in 2011 uh, and uh, so my co-founder, he's a student of the Nobel laureate Richard Smalley mm -hmm. who discovered these fullerenes and football shaped molecules with Kroto. Mm -hmm. So this kind of set off this field of nanotech and fullerenes in a very big way. So since our starting point when we first set out to make this happen, the only constant thing we heard from people is that it's impossible, it's very difficult to make something like this happen. So in fact Nopo stood for not possible back then because people said it's impossible to do that and I found the domain name too for that at that time. Mm -hmm. And so as we continued development on the nanotubes, it took us two years to produce a first flake of nanotubes. It was just like one tiny flake, a few micrograms of nanotubes and I was like super excited. 
it took us a further 50 iterations on those reactors to produce uh, nanotubes in a decent quantity. These are the reactors uh, which produce single or carbon nanotubes. So uh, we follow a process called HIPCO, high pressure carbon monoxide, which is a, a process invented by uh, Noble Laureate, uh, Richard Smalley and team. We follow the same uh, process here. Uh, but the reactors, what you are seeing here, these are indigenously designed and uh, built by NOPO. This is the nanotubes as produced from the reactor. You can see that they are fluffy and the volume is so high. So it's now been uh, 11 years. Okay. And as an individual, I've been pursuing it since my childhood. Like since uh, I've been in high school, I wanted to make this happen. Mm. So one way or the other, I took up uh, studies around it, trying to figure out how to make the material. So the last time I was like trying to compute numbers, I was like, okay, so I've been working on it for 25 years. Mm -hmm. But as a company, it's been 11 years that we've been doing this. We found that the first application that could make a massive impact on the planet is actually in the area of water. Mm -hmm. And serendipitously, we have made nanotubes that are perfect for water applications. Uh, we started uh, first learning about this through a bunch of work that came out of NASA mm -hmm. and MIT and Lawrence Livermore. Mm -hmm. And at uh, these sizes, these structures seem to have the ability to pass water molecules without friction. Mm -hmm. And that is something we started as a work five years ago. Okay. And now we are proud to have created such membranes. So the team has made membranes that can actually transport water faster than any known membrane today. And with further developments, we are going to be hitting these numbers of 100x improvement in performance, which means you'll have much cheaper, clean water and a, a, a massive sustainability initiative across the planet where whatever we contaminate, we can clear it up. When you use a nanotube membrane, it functions with the existing system. It functions on, goes into the existing uh, membrane cartridge, replaces that with a nanotube membrane. You get a higher flow because the nanotubes are now allowing water molecules to pass through. Everything remains the same, performance gets better mm. and now you have more clean water coming out for the same size system which was uh, impossible with the existing conventional RO system. One of the customers that reached out on this was Tesla earlier this year who wanted to use this material in their batteries and we found a similar interest from Toyota mm. where they want to use these nanotubes in their batteries again where they have seen that this improves performance drastically by holding the electrodes together in shape. And this ability to create specific diameters has attracted attention of companies like TSMC who make electronic chips uh, for most of the planet where these nanotubes are touted as a potential replacement for silicon circuits where they could improve performance by a factor of 100. So the nanotube composites are one area where we see a lot of applications coming out for them as high strength structures and we see a lot of programs coming in even from the government to support such developments within India. It really seems like the future of carbon nanotubes and especially single wall carbon nanotubes is extremely promising. That's true. So there's going to be a tremendous growth uh, in all of its applications within the next few years and I'm sure we'll be constantly hearing about it That's true. all the time. Yeah, and we are proud to be making all of that happen from within India. And you are the only company manufacturing single wall carbon nanotubes in India. That's correct. And to such small diameters in the whole world. That's true.